برايفت سبيس بلس في كل مكان السلام عليكم معنا السيده آه ايلين ابونشين آه نائبه آه رئيس التحالف المغربي الامريكي بتكساس عند راي في القضيه الوطنيه ونحاول نطرحوا عليها بعض الاسئله وتجاوبنا عليها فيرست اوف اول هاو ديد يو جيت انفولفد ان ذا صحراء ايشوز مروكن صحراء ايشوز رايت ذاتس ذا فيرست كويستشن اي اولويز جيت سو اي هاد ا فريند Um, who was Moroccan. He and his wife lived in Austria, believe it or not. So I'm in Dallas and they were in Austria. But you can't have a Moroccan friend and not hear about the Sahara. So of course it came up and I was interested. I did some reading, I did some studying. And um, you know, when I first started, I, I wasn't pro-Moroccan and I wasn't pro-Polisario. I, I didn't have a position. Yeah. What I had was curiosity. And as I studied and as I read literally both sides, um, I would read one version from the Polisario side and then I'd turn around and I'd read the other version. And um, what I became very quickly was pro-Sahari. And the more I became pro-Sahari, not pro Moroccan Sahari. No, Sahari the people. Yeah. So the more I became more supportive of the people, the more then I looked for who was taking care of the people. And that's how I became pro-Moroccan. Because at the end of the day, what I wanted was freedom for people that I saw suffering and that I saw desperate in the middle of the desert. And the avenue, the pathway that I saw for that was what was offered by Morocco. And in fact, everything that I saw that was offered by the Polisario kept them locked in there. So for me, it was a decision that the people themselves, that the Sahari people themselves brought me to. So if there's a reason that I'm pro-Moroccan, it's the people in the camps who convinced me that I should be. Okay. I think the other thing that is important is what made me take action, because it's one thing to be interested and to read, But what made me take action was um, I, I come from the 60s and the 70s, and uh, the Kennedy name was one that symbolized civil rights, human rights, empathy, compassion. And I woke up one morning and I saw an article by Carrie Kennedy. And she was saying how she supported the Sahari people. And, It never occurred to me that she wouldn't have reached any other conclusion than what I had reached. And she wanted people to sign a petition. This was back about three years ago. And the more I read, the more I realized that what she was saying was very different than what I had understood and what I had found. And by the time I got to the end of her article, I realized that either I was very, very wrong or she was very, very wrong. So I spent a lot of time going back over and rereading and, and relearning and re-questioning myself. And at the end of the day, what I came up with was that she was wrong. So I felt like I needed to make some kind of statement that said that she didn't speak for me or all of my country. So we started the Facebook page, um, Polisaria Threaten the Desert, and it's, uh, it's been really rewarding. We started with 13 people, and we have over 11,000 today that basically say Kerry Kennedy doesn't represent all the Americans and their opinions. Yeah. Do you support the autonomy plan? Yes, I do support the autonomy plan. You know, today there's, there's just a new reality in yeah. the Sahara. It, It's not 1975, it's not 1991. Um, today is an entirely different picture than when Monroso came in. It's an entirely different picture than it was in, in 2010. The advances that have been made are exponential. So I think, actually, if you, if you look at it, the autonomy plan is already de facto in place. In September of 2015, there were elections held all over Morocco, regional and local elections. In the country itself, there was 54% plus or minus turnout of eligible voters. In the Sahara, there were over 80% of the population turned out to vote. 
that's phenomenal. We don't have that here in the United States. So I, I can't imagine what more self-representation that you could be looking for than an 80% turnout. Yeah. So, you know, they, there is, in fact, representation. There is, in fact, uh, an avenue to have your voice heard. There is, in fact, people in Parliament mm -hmm. there that that are from the Sahara, that are Sahari people. The other things that are important, and, and the reason that, that I support autonomy, and so many of people in the rest of the world support autonomy, as you know, um, it's described as the only credible and logical um, yes. path to a solution in the Sahara. So. The, the main things that I look at are, are what's better for the people, right? Because as I told you, it's the Sahari people themselves that made me pro-Moroccan. Yeah. So it's things like education. In 1975, there was 14% of the population, school age population, were in secondary schools. Yeah. Today, that's 74% sustainable. That's yeah. not a, a pick a number. That's real number of yeah. kids that are in school Unhealthy. today. Yeah, so yeah. those kinds of things are important. The King had just announced uh, a few months ago $8 billion worth of investment that's going to go into yeah. the Sahara. Yeah. That's jobs, that's, that's growth, that's futures, that's a real opportunity for the people who live there, for the residents there. And those residents are Moroccans and they are Sahari Moroccans and they are all unified. What do you think about what uh, Ban Ki-moon said? When he was in Tindu? Yeah. You know, it, it made me really sad because I, I think that what he did was, was take um, a very good opportunity to bring people together and he divided them. And you have to remember that he's not just dividing, you know, countries that don't like each other or people that don't like each other. He's dividing families. These are people who have aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and, and grandmothers and grandfathers that live in those camps. So he's not just dividing people that have a disagreement. He's dividing families, and that's very sad. As far as his comments about occupation, you know, the fact is you can't occupy. A, you can't, by definition, by the no, Hague definition, definition yes, yes. you can't occupy something that was not a state to begin with. Yes. And at the time that Morocco came in and reclaimed their territory, the Polisario wasn't a state. There was no Western Sahara state. So There's no flag of Polisario exactly, in the United States. Exactly. So you can't, you can't occupy something by definition. Yes. So first of all, just to make an erroneous statement like that, not only was it inflammatory, it was incorrect. And that's just a really sad thing to have happen. So, yeah, I think that, um, you know, he's discredited, discredited himself and he's discredited the UN and, and the, the effort and the time and the dedication that people have put in for years now. And, you know, he suggested the idea of a referendum and somehow that he could make something happen that, um, because it's not possible. Again, you know, we could go into a long discussion about the history yeah, and yeah. you and I have shared yeah, some yeah. of that. Um, but the reality is you can't draw those arbitrary lines. Morocco was the first uh, country recognized the independence of the uh, United States uh, mm -hmm. of America. Yes. In the map of Morocco in this time, there was a Sahara or not? Yes, there, there was a, a Moroccan Sahara at the time. So I think that's, you know, again, it's about history. And unfortunately, it's very easy to um, create a reality through, um, th through things that are easy to say. So it's easy for me to, to make up a story and put that out there and tell you what's going on. Um, it's much harder to go back and look for maps of 1777. But if someone's willing to invest that time, if someone's willing to go back and read the true history, not Morocco's history, not the Palisario's history, but independent history yeah. that's been written without those prejudices on either side, what you find 
is complete support for the sovereignty of that area. And what you find is from 1956, from, from the decolonization of Africa, Morocco making a huge effort from the very beginning to get their land back and incrementally gaining that property, gaining that land back over a period of years. The, the reclaiming of the Sahara was just one more step in that process. There had been three or four before that. Yeah. So it's not, um, everybody wants to take this issue and look at it in one capsule of time um, under, under a microscope of an, an organization that frankly was the product of a, of a Marxist kind of generation and they want to call it, you know, they want to view history through that lens. And really, that's pretty myopic. So I think if the world will take the time to look at that with a little broader scope and um, look at it with their heads first yeah. and their hearts second, um, they may come to a similar conclusion that I did. We hope that. Thank yes. you very much.